Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to Coffee and Headlines. This is our daily get-together live here on Facebook every morning at 1030 in the morning where we gather and we take a look at headlines and stories and comments and suggestions and questions and tips that help us have an awesome life here in Puerto Vallarta as an English-speaking local community. Woo! I got that right in one take. That's awesome. <laughs> I hope everybody's doing great. Today is October the 29th. And as always, it is great to see you. It is great to see people that join us on a daily basis or fairly frequently. But it's also, <clears throat> excuse me, great to welcome new new um, friends to our community. So if you're new and you would like us to give you an awesome little welcome, or at least just say welcome, just write the word new in your comments. And if you have specific comments or questions that you want to make during the broadcast, it helps us a lot if you write the letter Q before your comment. And we try to get to those, um, or we try to get to those on the show, or we try to get to those shortly thereafter um, when I take a look at your comments after the show. So here we are. Um, let me very quickly see who's here. And if we have some preliminary questions, um, oh my goodness, Jeannie is here and she looks Halloween-y. Jeannie, Looks Halloweeny. Good morning. Uh, Playa Los Muertos is in the house. Yakima is in the house. Um, steamy Vallarta is in the house. It is steamy still. Uh, Jonathan, I would love to hear your last name spelled out loud because I cannot even begin to imagine how it would happen. Uh, but that's an awesome last name. Welcome. Um, um, good morning, everyone. It seems the crazy button may have been pushed as well. Well, I may have a thing or two to comment about that in a second. Uh, Plaza Dorada is in the house. Um, boom, pirim, pam, pum, pam. Um, lots of friends, lots of friends are here. Uh, Kelly is saying hello to, to me and to everybody and to my assistant, Luna, from Colorado. This is wonderful. Um... Oh my God, a quick and, and easy question. Doug asks, are the new taxi prices per person or per ride? They are per ride for a maximum of three people going to the same place, no stops. That is the, that is the, the taxi thing. And I suspect there's gonna be a lot of questions like that today and in the next couple of days, we are going to lovingly and patiently answer each one of them. Um, <laughs> Logan says, not to mention the misinformation button. Um, let's admit it. Who saw people just going ever so slightly berserk yesterday? I mean, hello. It was, <laughs> it was crazy. It was crazy. There was a little bit of everything yesterday. Uh, I talked to some of my, my fellow friends that, that, that monitor, um, bulletin boards and Facebook groups and stuff like that. And we all had quite an interesting day. I, for me, it went from, from it, it went the whole gamut. There were all kinds of questions. We spent most of the day yesterday fielding questions and feeling happy for being useful. Um, but then there were the two individuals that decided to almost have a pissing contest because Vallarta Daily, I believe, uh, published the wrong time at which you were supposed to stop being at the beach and so forth and so on. And I quickly went to the source of the information and I figured, well, um, 
this is this is the source of the information. I mean, this is a time in which every news source, yours truly included, is bound to make mistakes. So I always refer to the basic source of information. Um, then there was this amazingly enlightening thread that I caught in one of the local boards where a bunch of English speaking folks um, were starting to were question. Well, actually, the question was from from John McLeod, who asked um, why Mexicans, why do Mexicans not wear face masks? And it was a legitimate question. He was like, um, you know, I'm looking for for honest answers. I'm looking for, you know, I'm not looking to create a stir or anything. And uh, oh, my goodness, the gamut of answers that he got some were pretty accurate from a mexican point of view others were all over the place and the bottom line they had a lot to do in my humble opinion with how connected the english speaking community is with the local community i mean it's it it was clear to me from the answers and some of the people that i knew that were um uh that were answering uh that some people clearly are engaged in Mexico, the country, the locals, the culture, the language, et cetera, et cetera. And some people are not. And I suppose that is that is OK, because ultimately, as we've said frequently, um, you know, this is a big pond and there's enough space for everybody. It's a huge sandbox. But boy, some of those answers were interested in, interesting and colorful. Um, other people, uh, what did other people do? Other people made memes. Like, for example, I saw a bunch of memes about the, the emergency button. This one has to do with um, with uh, how the, the taxi drivers are going to make a killing over the next couple of weeks. Hopefully that'll be the case. Uh, then there was this other one that uh, shows uh, the, bu the emergency button. And uh, this guy is obviously... Uh, reading or watching, not, not needing the light coming from the lamppost. And this one represents people um, without car that live far away, that use a bus, that go to the market, uh, business people and Uber drivers. Of course, they are needing the extra light or illumination. And of course, people that throw parties and political events, you know, it's like they don't give a shit about the emergency button. So it was an interesting social commentary that I saw yesterday. Um, and then, of course, in the middle of all the crazy, um, the wonderful, the, 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 the smart, sexy, sassy, uh, sweet, silly uh, Ryan Donner, who is a local real estate personality, announced that he gave birth to twins on Facebook. Um, mind you, it was not his own twins. He gave birth to these two little ginger chingaderas that he grew in his own garden. And I thought it was the funniest thing that in the middle of all the craziness, you know, Ryan Donner just, you know, I just extracted two ginger chingaderas from my own garden. And I think we should name them. I mean, we should call them something like Point and Setia or Punta and Mita or I don't know. But I just thought it was absolutely endearing. Not too long ago, we described the Mexican expression cosita or mi vida for something that um, that is really sweet and endearing. So when I saw that Ryan Denner, uh, Donner very proudly announced the arrival of his two ginger chingaderas, the first thing that I had to uh, say to him is, uh, is cosita, mi vida. And of course, I looked for a nice meme that had a man smoking a cigar, but I figured, you know, he might get the wrong idea and think that I was, uh, never mind, I'm not even going to go there. As for me, you know, I had this, well, see, I looked like I just committed a crime in this photograph, and I didn't. You see, what happened is, um, my, <laughs> hold on just a second. Excuse me, I was about to laugh and I couldn't. Anyhow, yesterday, my dear friend Michael Buford, who owns Siam Cuisine, and who knows that I am addicted to his pad thai, extended an invitation for me to have dinner with him yesterday, but of course, I was overwhelmed with work, and I did not have a, a, I knew that I was not going to be able to make it all the way to Emiliano Zapata for dinner. But sometime in the afternoon, I was like, okay, I've worked hard enough. I'm going a little berserk myself. And I think I need a cocktail or I need something. So I walked to Costco to get uh, some wine. 
And I'll talk about these wines that you get at Costco. These are ginormous bottles. These are ginormous magnums. And I have to pedal these um, and, 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 and talk about these. But after I got out of Costco, I was like, okay, I'm feeling a little hungry. Uy, and Siam, Los Dules is so nearby. Maybe I should go to Siam. Well, anyhow, I get to Siam, the one that is over here in this side of the of, of town. And um, <laughs> and uh, I, I walked there and I figured, well, let me get a little something to go. Well, it turns out that Pinche Michael was watching on his, uh, was watching from Indiano Zapata on his um, observation security cameras or whatever they are. So he sent me this snapshot of me sitting and waiting for my order. And of course, he immediately instructed his staff that, that it was a complimentary order. And of course, I thanked him and I left a big tip. But I just, I just ended up having like the funniest moments yesterday. Um, uh, we don't need to get into that just yet. Um, let me just come back and let you know that, um, <clears throat> that yes, I went a little berserk and I drank a lot of wine. Again, if your wine shoppers, Costco is selling these magnums. Look at the size of this thing. It's going to last me a few days. Please don't think that I could juggle this on a single sitting. But it's this red blend that Costco is selling right now. And that's what I've been drinking for the last month or two because they're only 200 pesos each. They're wonderful. And no, I'm not developing a real drinking problem, as some people think I was. Um, uh, Logan calls me the Pad Thai Bandit. So what I'm trying to say with all this business of telling you how my day went yesterday is that, yes, we all went a little berserk yesterday. And yes, uh, everybody has a lot of questions. And there is a lot of misinformation out there here at Coffee and Headlines. We are going to continue referring to the source. And the source is this website that we shared yesterday. And we're going to share it again. This is the official information. There is additional information that was released this morning from the 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 municipality but seriously i, I mean everybody's going to make up things everybody's going to make mistakes please don't let yourselves get all berserk and worked up about whether you're going to be able to walk your dog on the beach at four o'clock in the afternoon i mean if that is your priority i respect that but um but if you have questions seriously uh give us the opportunity to answer them at least those of us that are hoping to give you the best possible answers at any given time. Let me very quickly look at your comments so far so that we can actually dive into the news. But I did want to give you a little bit of a sense as to what went on yesterday. My personal bottom line, yesterday at the end of the day, I uh, ended the day feeling grateful and feeling useful and feeling purposeful and feeling tipsy. Yes, I had a couple of glasses of wine and for me, it was a great day. And I hope that it was a good day for you. And I hope that if you are feeling any kind of angst about what's coming in the next 15 days, 14 days, that here at Coffee and Headlines, we'll find a way to smooth that out as much as we can. That's the end of the introduction. Yay, we survived that. Let's take a look. Ah, at your comments. We've looked at the good mornings. We've looked at the first question that I saw. Oh, well, yeah, that's another one. That's another one. And again, we are just sending great vibes to everybody north of the border or wherever you are as far as what's going on in the United States. Uh, Marcus says that he's going to be here Saturday. I hope your trip is uneventful. Good for you. Another arrival, Linda. That's wonderful. Um, how about from the airport? How about from the airport what? I don't understand that. If that is the question, uh, Janet, here at Coffee and Headlines, we love complete sentences. It helps a lot. Answer them. Um, <clears throat> la, 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 la. Uh, let's see. Uh, um, have not caught, caught up on the yesterday's news yet. Uh, well, Dale, my suggestion to you is get caught up with the news yet, because, uh, be, with yesterday's news, because there's a lot of, of news. Uh, will the markets for produce be closed on the weekends? Yes, they will be. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Another one. Morty Thomas, having caught you live in a while, I want to know about the new COVID rules. I have good news for you. All the COVID rules can be found in yesterday's show or they can be found in Spanish here. 
uh, question. Should we all put in a comment when we say, oh my God, the acronyms. Uh, should we all put in a comment when we say gay male or bondage discipline? Um, oh, good morning or BD, better dead? How can you see who's watching? How many? Just wondering if we should check in. You should always check in, Anna. We we love we love the welcomes. We love the welcomes, and then you start having conversations among yourselves. And I get lost in those conversations because I don't know if you're asking me or if you're asking one another. All that we're hoping, or I am hoping, is that if you are expecting me to acknowledge something, uh, it helps me a lot if I see a cue because then I know that you're asking me and not having an exchange uh, among yourselves, which is of course always wonderful. Uh, bing, ba -ding, bum, 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 bum. Let's see. Lots of good mornings. Thank you very much for all of them. Um, I apologize if we're not going to acknowledge each and every one of those. Uh, oh, no, Jeannie. No, no, no. Not a Magnum. I mean, that's two bottles of regular wine. That would make me absolutely crazy, and I would look really bad the following morning. Um... Suzanne doesn't understand. Are the restaurants on the beach closing at 3 p.m. the same as the beach? No, the restaurants are restaurants. The beach is the beach. The restaurants that are on the beachfront can open as late as the government has indicated. Uh, it's just that if you develop the sudden urge that, oh my God, my pad thai or my Caesar salad is so good, I must take my clothes off and run to go swimming at the beachfront restaurant, you won't be able to do that after 3 o'clock. That's the only thing. But if you want to go to a beachfront restaurant and have dinner, they're going to be serving until 8 or 9. I forget the exact time. Thank you for that, Pilar. Um, <clears throat> and boy, that people get in a tizzy about the beach. Um, I admire anybody that is really, I mean, I should be more excited about the beach after all. After all, this is why I chose to move here, but that's just me. The time has passed and I've forgotten about the beach. Maybe I should remember. Um, well, what is BD, Julie? Uh, I don't know. Better days? Big deal? Um, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Somebody explain to me what BD means. Um... I have to be the grammar police in addition to raconteur and fancy dresser. Oh, Heather, let's get shit-faced, please. Um, okay, so clearly BD is not bondage and discipline. Um, Olas, Far Olas Farmer's Market says they're open. Don't think so. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know because um, I don't even think they've started. If you're talking about the farmer's market, the, the old town farmer's market, I have no idea. Oh, BD is Buenos Dias. Oh, my God, I can be so dense. I can be so dense. No, no, you don't have to add a Q before Buenos Dias. Uh, but thank you very much for clarifying birthday, bitch day. I mean, it could mean all kinds of things. Why do I know? I'm just a little bilingual Mexican trying to make his way through the world with wine. Okay, enough of that. Let us move on to the news because life goes on. We have to talk about other things that are going on aside from this crazy time that we are going to be living for the next couple of weeks. Let's dive in. Okay, so for those of you that have been wondering if uh, what was announced for Jalisco is going to apply for the state of Nayarit, the good news is that Nayarit is still open, the beaches are open, everything is open, nothing is closing. So if you feel the urge to walk your dog at five in the sand, if you feel the urge to see the sunset while you're drinking a cocktail and your feet are buried in the sand, Riviera Nayarit is waiting for you. Um, this uh, article, uh, incidentally, um, moving forward, we're not going to uh, reflect local, uh, for the sake of accuracy, we're not going to reflect local articles that have to do with the emergency button only because we want to make sure that we share the most accurate information that comes from the source. The only instance in which we will discuss local articles will have to do when these offer analysis or additional context, such as this one. This was an interesting article from Informador, 
which gives us a little bit of a perspective of how cities like Madrid, Paris, and Berlin are closing down in similar fashion as Puerto Vallarta is, and um, and how things are going on in, in, in France and other places around the world. And the bottom line, when you compare the measures that we're going to have to deal with for the next couple of weeks with what other countries and other cities in the world are doing, what we're going through is a walk in the park. And we should always try to keep that in perspective. Uh, it is regretful that the shooting outside of Paco's ranch made international headlines. Um, as you can see from this one that comes from Towel Road. Towel Road is a very important LGBTQ news source. Uh, and they were also the ones that reported the men that were teabagging and, uh, and other fun activities in Mantamar recently. Um, this gives us a little bit more of a report of what went on. And of course, it is not very accurate, at least not based on what I've heard. But um, the bottom line is, <clears throat> you know, for anybody that at this stage of the game defends the fact that, oh, no, bad things don't happen in Puerto Vallarta. And if something bad happens, we mustn't talk about it. Well, the, that mentality is something that was very helpful and useful before social media happened. Because, you know, what happens when when we try to, and I'm, I don't, me, I don't mean yours truly, what happens when we try to dismiss bad things by not talking about it, and then somebody shows up and, and asks the question, or what happens when we try to just cover something under the rug, or, you know, and, and we see a news item from another country. So, you know, we try to tell things as they are, and because, you know, the world's going to find out that's just the nature of the world now, or maybe that's just me. Um, in other news, I want to bring you up to date on this ongoing um, difference of opinion going on between Mexican President Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador and the Federalist Alliance. We have talked in the past about how there is a group of state governors in Mexico that have come together as an alliance and have shared their discontent with some of the guidelines that our president is setting forth um, in terms of how decisions are made and the relationship between the president and, um, and the different states. Like, for example, our president, and get this, this is actually even weird for me to understand, but our president refuses to meet, allegedly, refuses to meet one-on-one -on -one with the state governors. Um, and I don't understand the reasoning. As a Mexican, I don't get it. I mean, <clears throat> if you want to see what's going on with each state, you know, at some point, you know, you have them over for tea or a glass of red or tequila or whatever. And, um, and you know, you, you smoke a fatty and you go, hey, so what's going on in Tlaxcala or what's going on in, in Jalisco or whatever? Well, our president doesn't do that. So this alliance of governors is now... Um, Oh, God, again, with the panties in a twist or the TZ in the panties or what knickers in the whatever. The alliance is unhappy because, according to the Federalist Alliance, the federal government is not distributing support to all the states evenly. Uh, so these Federalist governments are, have come to a point in which they've, they're actually querying the citizenship of the states as to whether each state should give back to the federation whatever percentage of the income that the state made. Um, and, and it's difficult to explain, but I did want to share at least a little bit of that with you so that you understand that there is a difference of opinion that is going on between our president and the states. Um, most definitely included there is our governor, the state of Jalisco, uh, our governor, Enrique Alfaro, has very openly uh, uh, complained about some decisions that the, our president has made. And in fact, uh, when the emergency button was pushed, he couldn't resist to make that comment that once again, the federal government is trying to deny the fact that we're going through a second phase of coronavirus or that there is a return or a resurgence of it, which we commented a few days ago that uh, our president said, oh, no, there's no such thing as a return of coronavirus. So 
Ah, so these people are arguing um, and as much as the local people are arguing as to whether they can go to the beach or not. <clears throat> All arguments are important. Some of them are more fascinating than others. Uh, for those of you that are flying or have flown or are thinking about flying, I found this article from Yahoo that comes from research from Harvard University that says air plant, airplane COVID-19 risk is very low with masks and other actions. And this is a report that comes from the Harvard School of Public Health. It is in English. So if you are about to make a trip or if you're feeling uneasy about that plane ride and so forth and so on, there is some information for you to consider here. And of course, this will be available along with all the other uh, bookmarks that we're going to discuss today. Let me um, let me take a quick look at your questions and uh, then we jump into uh, weather and other leisurely stuff. And I have a great surprise for members of Coffee and Headlines. Surprise, a surprise gift. Let's take a quick look. Um, must we finish eating by 8.30 p.m. or order by 8.30 p.m. at restaurants? Ah, good question, Brad, Monica, Monica, Brad. Um, this is a good question because restaurants um, can offer takeout um, at night. If you are sitting down at the restaurant, the restaurant can only, the restaurant has to close at, 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 at 8.30, I believe. Um, so, you know, think about it. If you've gone to a restaurant that closes at 11 and it's 10.35 and you're still sitting down and you're still dealing with a check and then the conversation is going on, well, obviously, the, the, the restaurant is patiently waiting for you to get done with your business because they're about to close. So um, so rather than looking for specifics there, uh, Brad, Monica, you know, the, consider the following question. What is the time in which we should be done so that we can make life easy for that restaurant if we're sitting down. And because I know there's at least one restaurant owner in the house, I am looking forward to hearing his comment. Now, things get different if you're ordering takeout. You can order takeout in, I'm, I'm, if you're ordering home delivery. You can order home delivery as long as the restaurant chooses to offer it. You just cannot go to the restaurant and pick it up after the time in which the restaurant closes. Uh, because essentially what the government doesn't want is for you to be out and about if you don't have to. Uh, I hope that um, that uh, helps you. Indoor dining till 8.30, open air, beach closes at 3 p.m. Interesting logic. Um, it makes perfect sense to me, Steve. Um, for me, it means that the government just doesn't want people hanging out where they're not supposed to be hanging out. I mean, the beach is a magnet for people that want to be outside. I, I, it makes sense to me. Uh, no church services uh, on weekends. Uh, I believe it's no church services on weekends. I can go back to the uh, website and, and confirm that. But again, all that information uh, Dana is in the website that we've already shown and for which we're going to offer uh, uh, the, the, the bookmark. Sorry, I'm confused. Beaches are going to be closed at 3 p.m. each day. The answer is yes. Um, Michael has clarified this. I don't know if this is from before or from just now. Um, um, Strange logic, the open sand is the safest place. Well, yes, it is a safe place, Mushi, but you know, if you are there safely with a bunch of the other people that are there safely, you know, it's it's one of those things. Um, ah, thanks for clarifying that. Olas Altas Farmer's Market starts Saturday, and I have news for Farmer's Markets uh, from Rivera Nayarit coming up in a second. Uh, di, da, di, da, 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 di. See, that's my lifestyle. That's me, Kathleen. Thank you very much. Uh, let's see. I'm almost there, guys. Oh, there's another cue. What streaming music service do you and the Paconians use in PV? I tried to use Pandora, and it gave me a message that it is not available in this country. Oh, my God, Michael. I love that question. 
because I am a recent convert to satellite, to internet radio. And I have solved all my woes through internet radio. Um, it is a little detailed, um, um, but I'm happy to offer a little bit more of information. If anybody is interesting um, in streaming music um, at home and how I do it and how you can do it and not pay a cent, uh, just write the word radio in your comments. And if I don't see a lot of people asking radio, then I will not prepare a special segment about this. And Michael, feel free to send me a personal message through Coffee and Headlines, and I'll be happy to answer more specifics if you want. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Some answers. Great for that. More answers. Thank you. Jackie. Some of the local media is reporting that the beaches are open until 8.30. So confusing. Um, it's only confusing um, if we allow ourselves to pursue information from sources that are not credible. And as I said before, even the most credible sources can make mistakes. I make mistakes. I don't know how credible I am, but I know that I make mistakes. A dear friend of mine made a mistake yesterday, and I told her, you know, don't sweat it. Um, but it is crazy amazing that when a source publishes something that turns out to be wrong, I mean, it clearly sends a lot of people in all kinds of places and in all kinds of directions. But I refer back to the the website the official website the official website says that the beach closes in the afternoon and as far as i know if the government says the beach closes in the afternoon the government is more powerful than any local source or all local sources combined in that regard uh <clears throat> we're a new member as of yesterday hola caro welcome to coffee and headlines do we chime into a different place for members. Yes, I will explain that in a second. Uh, just give me a second. Uh, or actually, let me let me start diving into this, because if you're a new member, you may not know this. Um, most media sources in papers, digital or online in this town and in many places in the world have advertisers. These advertisers frequently have some influence, positive or negative, on the, in the, on the editorial information that is shared, on the news, the quality of the news, who gets mentioned, who doesn't get mentioned, so forth and so on. Here at Coffee and Headlines, we don't believe in that model. Here at Coffee and, and Headlines, we are a community-supported uh, project. This allows for us uh, to do certain things. Number one, it allows us to say whatever we want. Number two, we can talk about restaurant A and restaurant B and restaurant C without getting advertiser restaurant D on our case because how dare we talk about other restaurants when he is the one that is advertising. Here, the support comes from you, from you. If you find here information that is helpful, useful, inspiring, makes you laugh, makes you love Puerto Vallarta a little bit more, there are some ways in which you can become a contributing member and I will outline those in a second. Um, let's see, let's see, Bidding bam bam. I don't see any other cues, so that we can easily continue. Ra oh my God, look at all these radio, radio, radio. Oh, how fun, how fun. You get to find out about the new internet radio that I just purchased. It was so inexpensive and it makes me so very happy. Give me a few days to prepare this and I will be so very happy to talk about this. You guys have made my day. <laughs> Tapia says, okay, radio, fine, talk about radio. I love it. I love it. Uh, anyhow, I think a radio, please. Okay, I'll be happy to talk about this. Um, traveling on a full flight or going to church makes no sense. That depends if it's on, on whether you smoked something fun or not before you went to church or you hopped on the flight, my dear friend. But that's just me. Um, never mind. Congratulations, uh, Paco. Thank you very much, Kelly. That was a little weird. All of a sudden, I kept looking through through the corner of my eye, half the number of people were uh, kept was going up. It, again, it feels wonderful to be useful. Um, Angelica asks, los, los puestos cierran a las ocho y media. That refers to the, 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 the places that sell food on the street. You know, <clears throat> I think everything closes at 8.30, Angelica. I think the idea here 
is that people have no reason to go outside after 8.30 at night. Uh, it, is, it is just, um, it is as clear as day. I mean, the idea is that you're going to walk out into Puerto Vallarta um, uh, after 8.30 and, uh, and you will have no reason to be out. You really will have no reason to be out. Uh, Diana, can I ask you who someone is? <clears throat> Again, um, I don't want to, uh, you know, uh, uh, trust the official source, my friends. It's that simple. If someone says something, then just wish them a lovely day or, or whatever. But, you know, if you want to keep some sort of mental sanity and not go this route, then just trust the official sources. Um, if other people tell you otherwise, then you can choose to get into a pissing contest or not. Uh, but the official sources say that the beach is not opening uh, after 3, 3, 3.30. I forget the exact time. So, you know, choose to, to get confused or choose to read the sources. And before you tell me, well, the sources are written in Spanish, remember, if you're browsing using Google Chrome, you can install, uh, you can easily make it translate things for you. It will not be a beautifully illuminated, commentated Spanish translations like we try to do here, but it will definitely be sufficient. And if you have questions after that, you're more than welcome to send them my way. Use the contact form on the website or simply send a message through the Coffee and Headlines website here on Facebook. Oh uh, my God, look at the time. Let me quickly go into the rest of the show. We still have news and leisurely stuff to look at. Boom. Before I give you the great surprise, uh, let us take a look at the weather. It's 27 degrees Celsius, feels like 30. Uh, it is 80 degrees Fahrenheit. There's no chance of rain right now. Bummer. Humidity is at 81%, and we can see that it's going to be humid and partly cloudy through the day with a high temperature of 31. <clears throat> uh, humid and partly cloudy through the day. Again, tomorrow, temperature of 31. Um, but that's okay because a new episode of Star Trek comes out on Netflix, and that's all that matters as far as I'm concerned. And Saturday, it'll be humid and partly cloudy through the day with a high temperature of 32. So that is the news about the weather forecast. And now, um, okay, let me take a quick look at a couple of things. Da, 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 da. Yes, okay to drive or walk to from a friend's house after 8.30. Absolutely, Barbara. This is not a uh, curfew. It's not a uh, curfew. It's, you know, in fact, I'm looking forward to go out for walks, uh, going out for walks in the evening because it's fresh and it is more easy to walk about and, and so forth and so on. Um, anyhow, I want to tell you a little something. Um, we started Coffee and Headlines from nothing. Uh, there were only, the, I think the first broadcast, there were only like... 20 people that tuned in um, and, and little by little you started liking it and trusting it and so forth and so on. And I am happy to announce that as of this morning, we are blessed with 185 members that have chosen to pursue either a monthly or an annual membership here at Coffee and Headlines. Luna and I could not be happier. And because of that, Luna and I want to give you a gift. Um, and we've been talking a lot about restaurants in Versailles, and I know that I haven't finished editing my walking tour number three of three walking tours of Versailles restaurants. But in the middle of that, I decided to put a little something, something together for you. And it is called Versailles for Foodies. Wow, Versailles for Foodies. So Versailles for Foodies is this website that is almost finished. I'll make it public on Monday, but this is a guide to 21 essential restaurants, eateries, and food-related shops in Colonia Versailles. 
and it is 21 and counting because we're going to be adding more of these. So the way this works, this is a website and you can see if I hover over the map, there's a bunch of restaurants here and you can either click on the start exploring button at the bottom or you can click on this right hand arrow and it'll take you from restaurant to restaurant and each restaurant has um, its own little uh, photograph. It's a little slow because I'm running it from my other computer, uh, from my other monitor, but each restaurant gets its own little um, mini description and a link to uh, the Facebook page and all the restaurants have a Facebook page. And if it is a restaurant about which we have written something in the past, such as, for example, this restaurant, Marisco's Freddy, you can click on the link that takes you to the, the article. And of course, you can see where the restaurants are located in relationship to one another. Um, and the only thing that I'm waiting to do is to add a few, a handful of photos that are missing. And it is not only Versailles, it is also including a few eateries that are in the outskirts of Versailles that we love. For example, Michael's Michael Siam Cuisine. In fact, the reason why I wanted to go yesterday is because I wanted to, um, to take a photo of his restaurant, but it includes places that are all over the place. So anyhow, what's going to happen with this is, um, this is going to be my thank you to all of you 185 people that have, uh, um, that are supporting Coffee and Headlines. You will receive the link for this, uh, this tool in your email on Monday, uh, and, um, and that'll be a little thank you from us. Uh, if you're wondering um, what you can do to receive this, all you have to do is go into buymeacoffee.com, which is the website that I always mention. And here at buymeacoffee.com, you can choose to become a member for $4 a month or $30 a year, or you can choose to support uh, by buying Luna and I as many coffees as you want. The membership, of course, once you're a member, it stays on as long as you want to be a member. And the support is whenever you feel like buying us a coffee, you're more than welcome to buy us a coffee. What do you get in exchange? Well, you get um, what we do here. You know, this is this is what we do, and uh, and it is possible only because of you, and it is all for you. So that's the end of the pitch. Moving right along, uh, I have more headlines to to share with you. And why did my volume go down on its own? This is really crazy. I need to get a new mixer, guys. I need to get a new mixer. Anyhow, going back to the headlines, I was happy to see this press release from Riviera Nayarit that indicates that farmers markets are coming back to Riviera Nayarit as well. The La Cruz market is coming back on the 1st of November, um, and it's there on Sundays. The, the Mercado in Sayulita comes back on Friday, starting November 6th. And it's there <clears throat> all Fridays. The Riviera Farmer's Market, I've never heard of that one, uh, comes back on no November the 12th, and it's there every Tuesdays. And the Tianguis in Lo de Marcos comes back on... Oh, the Tianguis Lo de Marcos is not coming back. This is unfortunate. They have decided not to continue the, the, the Farmer's Market this season. So... I will share this information as soon as we're done with uh, with the show, as always. Uh, I also want to let you know that the Day of the Dead Skeleton Barbie that we announced uh, the other day is splitting opinion in Mexico. And how could it not? The freaking thing is $79. Do you believe that? I mean, it costs $79 to own a Barbie doll. Um, that's two subscriptions to Coffee and Headlines, if I may say so myself. And uh, I dare say I might be more useful than a Barbie doll. Anyhow, here's an interesting article in English on cultural appropriation, if you want to read it. Um, let me also tell you that uh, Facebook is allowing you to also change your avatar and whatnot to celebrate the Day of the Dead. I don't particularly know exactly how to do it because I'm not big on changing my avatar on Facebook. I know that some people just love to do that, and that's perfectly okay. 
And uh, the last thing that I want to share with you before we let each other go is that Zoe Lewis, our dear Zoe Lewis, is at it again. She's going to have a show today um, with the social distancers. It's going to be a Halloween themed show. I'm going to leave you with the address on her Facebook page so that you can catch it live if you want to do that. Um, let me quickly take a look at your final comments before we get going. Uh, let's see. Bam, 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 bam. Oh, I'm so glad that you like the, the 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 Versailles thing. Needless to say, Raymond, your bakery is in it. Needless to say, and of course, I saw an, a favorable comment uh, from Kathleen. Um, who has licks in the neighborhood. Of course, licks is not in Versailles per se, but how could we be responsible Versailles foodies without walking across the street to the other side and not having a little bit of, of homemade ice cream from Kathleen? Um, um, oh, interesting. I, I definitely need to get a new sound mixer. My sound mixer has been with me for a long time, so maybe it's time to to splurge for another one. See, that's where membership of Coffee and Headlines goes to, uh, among other things. Uh, let me see, let me see. Um, I am really promoting the Colonia, but because for a couple of reasons, Angelica. Number one, it's near me, so it's easy. And number two, Versailles offers a lot of opportunities for young, uh, small entrepreneurs that other parts of town are, don't offer anymore because it's become very expensive to be in other parts of town. So I feel more useful helping to promote places and people that are just getting started than people that are doing fine on their own and they really don't need an extra push on the back. So I hope to believe that we're doing a good deed by, um, by promoting this. Um, Yay, more people that enjoy the restaurant uh, idea. This is fantastic. Again, if you are already sustaining members of Coffee and Headlines, you will get an email message on Monday. Um, if you're not, you're welcome to consider membership. You know what the website is. I put it up quite frequently on, on the program, and we will find you will find it in the show notes as well. Um, bam, 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 bam. Is the Marina Market open now? I don't think so. Uh, but I would check on their Facebook page to be precise. Um, let's see. Zoe is great. Absolutely. She is one of the best live shows you could find. She is absolutely wonderful. Anyhow, <clears throat> question. Will I be at Mercurio on Sunday? Yes, I will. Yes, I will. I have, um, I'm getting together with dear friends that just came back, and I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, so if you're going to be at... Uh, at Mercurio on Sunday, Stephen, please reach out and say hello or, or slap me if you don't like me. I don't care. I love the pain and I love the pleasure. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <clears throat> anyhow, um, this is it. This is what we did today and we survived and I am so grateful for you. Um, I appreciate uh, the patience that you have when we go through all these comments because I know that a lot of you, uh, a lot of us are feeling different levels of comfort or discomfort and we just try to even out the playing game um, as much as we can hear at Coffee and Headlines. Um, Linda says that this was the first time that she was here. Linda, thank you very much. May we continue to be helpful and inspiring to you. And if not, we are just an email message or a, 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 a chat message away. The general idea here is to help us English speaking locals better connect with one another and better connect with all the wonderful things that go on here in Puerto Vallarta and surrounding communities. Do we get a couple of tourists every now and then? Absolutely. Do we get a couple of visitors every now and then? Definitely. And people that are looking to move to Puerto Vallarta. We welcome everyone, but our meat and potatoes is those of us that live here and work here and are already here and maybe have been executed a number of times. And sometimes we wake up wondering, what the fuck are we still doing here? Oh, what the fuck? Oh yes, today's a perfect day. There you go. So with that in mind, have a great day. Stay kind. Stay wonderful. Stay happy. Stay communityed. 
Um, find the tribe that works for you. Stay safe, stay kind, stay wonderful, stay happy, stay in touch. And I hopefully will see you again soon. Have a great Thursday. Thursday.